So today we're in the mountains of British Columbia and we just put down a beautiful black bear. And I wanna break down for you guys how to pack out a black bear when you're in the high country and you actually gotta quarter them up and pack them out on your back. So I'm gonna take you guys through step by step exactly how to do that. Step one on this process, what I like to do is gut out the bear. So first things first, you wanna try and find a nice slope. So here we're fortunate, we're pretty set up already. We have a nice hole here. So what I'm gonna do is turn that bear around and I'm gonna sit him so his head's high and his butt is nice and low. That'll allow for really good blood flow and it'll help me pull the guts right out of there a lot faster. So this bear has been sitting overnight. We shot him late last night and uh, we decided not to gut him out just because this is grizzly country. So we set up our camp here to make sure that no bears would get on him. But now he's got rigor mortis. So it's gonna be a little trickier to break him down, but I'll show you guys how to do that. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make a quick incision right up here in the sternum. Now, you don't have to worry when you're in the sternum because the guts only start below the sternum. So I like to push in, get right down to that bone and make a good clean cut. Now, one thing you have to consider while you're doing this is what do you want to do with your hide? So for me, in this instance, I'm going to be making a rug with the head in. So I need to cape it out a certain way to do that. And I'm going to show you guys how to cape it out doing a rug. If you wanted to do a shoulder mount or something like that, you would actually start below the sternum here and you wouldn't make this initial incision up here. But because I'm only doing a rug mount, it's fine that I cut a little higher up on the bear. So once you got that hole in here, now if you got a knife like I do here, which actually has a gut hook, you wanna pull that gut hook out. And then you're gonna hook in right in that hole you made. And you're just gonna pull down. So once you make that initial cut down, you wanna follow that up with a secondary cut. And you're gonna notice you wanna be real careful here. So I'm making this secondary cut and you see I haven't pierced into where the stomach lining actually is yet. Once I'm down to the stomach lining, I know my sternum's right here below the meat. So I pop in a small hole there. And you wanna be very careful in this not to pop the stomach lining, which is just below here. So now that I have a small hole here I return to the gut hook. I get in there and you can actually feel that stomach lining in there. Cut down just like that. Now your entrails start to come up. Now because this bear has been sitting overnight, he's a little bit bloated. So it's, you can see his organs here have a lot of gases in them. This won't happen if you break the bear down right away. You won't have this big puff out of organs here. But if you do, you just simply push down, make sure not to touch any of those organs because then you're gonna get feces all over your meat. There you go. So just below the sternum, you actually have a lining in here which separates your heart and lungs up in that top chest cavity from the stomach. So I like to go through that lining and I get up there and I wanna grab a hold of the trachea with one hand and then I cut the trachea with my knife. And then that gives me a handle to be able to pull on to pull and just cut away anything that's kind of holding back me pulling that trachea. Now, as long as you're doing that, you can gut out a bear in two to three minutes. It really doesn't take very long. So, you go up high, you grab onto that esophagus, Once you have a good hold on that esophagus, you wanna be careful not to cut yourself, but you go in with your second hand and cut that esophagus.
Now, as you can see here, I got his esophagus in this hand. So all I'm doing is pulling, and the heart comes out, the lungs come out. Now notice when I'm in here pulling, I'm just pulling one side, and I just cut away anything against that interior wall, and I just pull. Keep cutting and pulling. Now that side's completely done. Come over here and do this side and the same thing. You can see this is the rest of that diaphragm here. So I just cut that out. Now here, once all the guts are out, this you're actually gonna have the urinary tract right here. So when you cut it, it might spray a little urine, but if you do it quickly, like this, boom, and the anus as well. So I like to do it like this. Some people like to cut it all the way out and then do that. But for me, there's a lot of blood in here to wash away any of the little bit of feces that might come in, and it's much faster to do. So once you got all the guts out of them, now this is where the saw blade comes in handy. It's really why I like these three-in-one knives. So you wanna split the pelvis here. That way you can clean out the rest of the anus and make sure that you got no feces on your meat. Now, you can see that that's this is the pelvic bone. I've split that pelvic bone completely. So I want to put that saw blade away now and pull my knife back out. Now, I finished this cut down, just like that. And then I actually pry the legs a little bit. You step on one and the other. It opens it opens you up a gap here, where then you could go in and easily pull out the rest of his anus. So that's it, at this point the bear is completely gutted. Now what I do, because I got him on this slope, is he's still full of blood in there. So I take that blood and I kind of wash out the meat. So if you did get any little bit of feces, in that general area, you wanna use this opportunity to take the blood and clean everything out.